Hi guys, uh, I'm going to do a video on 2x2 um, two two blind solving. Uh, it's really easy to do if you already know 3x3 three three blind solving, obviously, and you've probably already worked it out for yourself, but this video will just give you a couple of pointers um, that you may have missed. Solving the 2x2 two two blindfolded is a cool thing to be able to do um, because the 2x2 two has always been seen as a novelty by people who don't solve. Um, because it's so small and they always think that they can solve it until they try and then they realize that they just can't um, so when they scramble it and give it to you um, they obviously expect you to do it by looking at the cube but if you shut your eyes or look away while you're doing it after a short memorization they're going to be doubly impressed or at least that's the plan requirements for this video is that you already know how to solve a 3x3 blindfolded using the old Pokemon method um, if you don't, um, but you know how to solve a Rubik's Cube, um, then I would highly recommend going to Bad Mephisto's videos. Um, his blindfolded tutorial is superb and that's the way I learned in the first place. Advantages to doing 2x2 two two, uh, blind solving is obviously first of all that you don't have edge pieces, unlike on a 3x3. Three three. So when you're doing 3x3 three three blind solving you have to go through the whole edge memorization which is, always takes much longer than the corner. Um, so with a 2x2 two two, you don't have to do that, you only have to do the corner stage of Old Pokemon. The disadvantage is that with a 2x2 two two, when you're given it a scramble um, it doesn't have a set colour scheme because there are no centrepieces. Unlike on a 3x3, three three, um, when I'm doing 3x3 three three blind solving I always have orange on the front, blue on the right and yellow on top. This sets the, sets the colour scheme for the rest of my cube uh, and I know exactly where each colour is. On a 2x2, two two, what I do, um, and how I turn that into an advantage, is I find, like on a 3x3, three three, the orange, blue, and white piece would be in the front, bottom, right position. So when I'm given a scramble, I'll locate that piece, there it is right there, and I'll put it in the same position, orange, blue, white, in the front, bottom, right corner. Um, this now sets the colour scheme for the rest of the solve, and it also works out as a bonus because it gives you a free solved corner piece. So because you're given a, th a free solved corner piece, um, now you only have six more corners to do um, because obviously you don't solve the buff buffer piece in the edge. So in theory, and if you end up with another bonus solved piece, which I don't think, yeah, I have one here. Um, so actually I only have to memorize five words, um, providing I don't run into double cycles or anything. At the moment, I only have to memorize five words to be able to solve this cube. So now we can go ahead with memorization. Um, obviously, as I said, if you only have to memorize five words, it's not going to be a mission. And I can do uh, memorization. I've only just started doing blind solving. Um, but at the moment, I can do uh, a two by two blindfolded in under a minute. Now, I don't know what your um, position naming convention is um, for your blind solving. Obviously, everybody's different. Um, what I use is just the alphabet, um, and my position naming I'll show you on a solve 3x3 three three is uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, Y. Um, I miss out the Z and the X, same as Bam Mephisto did on his video, because it's much simpler um, to make words with uh, just Y rather than Z or X, and then it fits into the alphabet perfectly. So obviously those uh, naming that naming conventions transferred to my 2x2, two two, so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to start my memorization. I'm going to have a quick look around the cube to see, uh, here I have uh, another free solve piece, and... I notice that this piece is in its position just flipped so you always have to look out for those because you have to put them right afterwards. So first of all in my buffer position I have this piece, uh, the orange, yellow, blue, which obviously needs to go here, um, so that's going to be my H position. Um, then I'm, I've run into the buffer so I need to break into a new cycle. Um, so I'm going to chuck that, uh, because I need to flip that one, I can't put it there, I'm going to chuck it into the B position. Um, so it's going to be H, B, this one needs to go to the S position, so H, B, S. This one needs to go to K, H, B, S, K. This one is going to go back to B, taking over the buffer, so H, B, S, K, B. Um, and then I think after that, what I need to do is flip this piece around, so M and D. Now, basically, it's up to you. I mean, you could 
quite easily probably memorize those letters H B S K B M D. It's not that difficult. Um, I tend to make words anyway, just to make it overly easy, and it means that I'm never going to forget the memorization and embarrass myself. So I'm just going to let you decide what to do with those letters. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and solve. So we've made it pretty much the easiest we can do, giving ourselves a free corner piece. Um, and yeah, then just go ahead with old Pockman. So first of all we have H, so I'm just going to do a setup move there, use the J perm, and bring it back. Then we have B, so just the J perm again. And then we have S, so it's right here. Then I'm going to use the Y perm. And then we have K, so that's right here. I'm going to bring that up and use the Y perm again. And then we have B um, to put this piece and replace it with the buffer position. J perm again. And then we have M because we just need to flip this piece now. So M, then Y perm. And then all we have to do is D again. Um, so I'm going to rotate here, do the J-perm, and then your cube is solved. So to be honest, you probably were able to work that out by yourself if you already know Pokemon, but I just thought, you know, if you can't be bothered to work it out and you want to see a video on how to do it, that's how to do it, basically. And I don't know if people already used that technique of putting the solved piece into its position first to set the color scheme. Um, but if that's something that I've come up with that's new, then I'm glad that I was able to give you a pointer. Please post your uh, video responses of you solving 2x2 two two blindfolded um, because it's cool to see and I'd imagine some people can get crazy fast at it. Um, I think it should be an official event at competitions because it would be a lot of fun and uh, it's a much easier blind solving event for people who maybe don't want to go into a 2x2 two two and certainly not 4 and 5. I hope my video is helpful and uh, happy Cuban.